Morning all, Sunday Q&A, today from the garden. Nice air, not very sunny, but there you are. Supposed to be picking up next week. Right, so what we've done this week. Best boots, we did one on best boots. Um, RA says you should never put new shoes on the table. He's quite right. I think that goes back to when you're gonna get hanged. They used to give you a brand new suit and a brand new pair of shoes. Kind of pointless really, bearing in mind you're gonna wear it once, but they'd stick them on the table. And that's, I think that's where it comes from. It's sort of a superstition thing. So you're all out there with different kinds. Uh, Harry's house, he highly recommends redback boots from Australia. He says they're 100 quid. He said, but they're well worth it. So I, think, I suppose if they're comfortable, you're gonna wear them a long time. You're gonna get your wear out of them. That's, you know, that's my utility argument. Uh, there you go, Lee Westcott's in the cats. I used to wear cats on the market before I went to Timberlands. They're cheaper than Timberlands. I still prefer the Timberlands, but um, cats ain't mad. Good boots. Uh, Danny Richardson. Um, yeah, a lot of them, a couple of you do this, a few of you do this, are trainers in between jobs. So, you know, because like I say, wearing steels all the time, particularly when you're on the clutch and the brakes and all that, can sort of wear after a while, which is why I like the composite ones. But, um, I mean, what I used to do with the rigger boots, I mean, some people wear trainers. I have actually got one of those boots and spares in the van, just in case one day, say, for example, I'm, I'm on a job, some jobs, like if you're on a removal job or something like that, I do them in trainers. Um, and then if a job comes up at the end and you think, oh, if I only had my steels, I could take that. I always carry a spare pair in the van, like, you know. Um, yeah, and when I used to wear the rigger boots, in the summer, if it was really hot, I'd get in the van and I'd just whip the rigger boots off. I'd drive in socks. It's not ideal, but then racing drivers kind of do that, don't they? So they can feel the pedals and you get used to it after a while. So, um, and I know some of the HGV drivers where I turned up and they'll jump out of the van and they're in a pair of sliders. I don't think that's great. It's like flip flops. You, you could catch them. I'm not happy, you know. So I don't think that's ideal. But and also, if I did it, I'd look like something out of Grand Theft Auto. It looks weird. Uh, Gareth Vickers. Uh, he says he gets the price with the utility thing. He says, but you know, money doesn't necessarily mean quality. He bought a pair of the Goodyear trainers from Screwfix, top of the range in the Screwfix. He said after three months they'd worn through the soles. Yes, yeah, no good. Take them back. I bought these three months ago. Not fit for purpose, son. Give me another pair. Um, Ian Merrick, he says the cheapest ankle boots from, yeah, he says got the cheapest ankle boots from Tool Station, 12 months in and still going strong. Yeah, he's horses for courses, to be honest with you, it's what suits you, you know. Um, yeah, so Bob, Ke Jason Burke and Bob Keane, I mean, again, they don't do the money. Bob Keane's got a pair of lookalike uh, police boots off eBay, £26, still going strong. Well done, fair play to you. Uh, Paddy McGear, he says, yeah, he's, he's a, he drives in trainers. Um... A lot of them, I've looked at the trainers. They kind of, you know, even when, I mean, the Pumas are probably the best ones I've seen from the point of view of not looking to, they look like Tesco tearaways. You know, when you get the kids at school, and I was probably one of them, to be honest with you, at least to start off with, and they'd be like, what are they? That's why I got a job on a record store, because I didn't want to wear all the cheap Dunlop Green Flash anymore and go buy my own gear. But um, 11, 11 years old, working on a record store. Jeff loves banjo, partly. Uh, yeah, past the time. Um, yeah, so Paddy McGear keeps his in a bag and drives his trainers. Longfinger recommends the Black Hammer Safety Black Hammer Safety Trainers from Amazon. So maybe give them a little shout out. Uh, yeah, Paul Wilk Paul Wilkins, the composite trainers from Shoe Zone, twenty quid. He said they're blinding. And uh, Jason Burke, who says you've got more boots than my missus. I supremely doubt that, Jason, and I certainly know I've got more boots, less boots than my missus, who has a tendency to wear to buy exactly the same boot again. How many of you have got that? Yeah, but no, this one's got a zip, and that other one had a buckle. You can't see that. You can't see them. They're on the inside. Ah, these ones are brown. Your other ones are brown. No, they're oxblood. No, they're brown. It's the same boot. It looks like the same boot. Yeah. You just keep quiet, didn't you? Marital stress. Sat navs did a big thing on sat nav. Right, I've been using that. Um, what's it called? Road. Oh, I can't forget the name of the damn thing. Um, Road Legends or Truck Legends or something like that. I did a video. I'll do a link. Um, yeah, I've been using it all week. It's all right, actually. Um, it looks cool. It looks like Waze. What I've been doing, because Waze is definitely better on the, you know, it, it'll. The, the, the voice thing isn't so clever on the sat on the um the road warrior legend haulage thing um and i'll be running ways in the background and that one over the top so i, so I put two postcodes in because i'm trying to trying to both out to see which one's right so what happens is then i can see the the truck sat nav on the screen but i'm hearing 
Waze. Oh, Waze incidentally has now got Google and you can actually do voice activation. So I haven't tried it on places. You do it with postcodes, but to be honest with you, it doesn't take that long to type in six letters. But you presumably can press that little, that little Google voice thing, which is brilliant, and go Imperial War Museum, London, and it'll find it. I'll try that. I haven't tried that yet, or maybe one of you guys can let me know. But I've got to say, it really is six and one half a dozen the other on accuracy, on where to get to. I really like the fact that the, the truck sat now. I'm driving down the road, and I can see all the little six foot sixes to the left of me. Like I was going to do a job in Watford, and I, which you might, if you watch this day's video, you'll, you'll hear about it. And you'd think, I know there's a, a terrible six foot six in Watford where I've done my van in. Um, and they're pinging up, and I'm thinking, okay, that's interesting. It hasn't done any more rickets trying to take me down, you know roads that I can't drive down but having said that I have not been to places where it's likely to so you're still work in progress that road lords it's called road lords um there you go but other recommendations out there David Young swears by Copilot he says 85 quid to get it on the, on the phone um and it comes with Euro maps and everything that's lovely the only snag about that is a I've no, I don't run into Europe and b the operators I'm going for is a standard national because they give you standard national before they'll give you standard international so Euro maps is lovely but I ain't going to be using them not right now furthest I can ever get into Europe is probably Northern Ireland so you know but we still wouldn't, but you know, still be nice to have it. Uh, Steve, oh, yeah, Steve Bradley says with the Road Lord sat nav, it is the speed in kilometers. It is, but as soon as you turn it on, it says the place that you're the country you're driving on is not. Would you like to accept the country? So you just got accept and it comes up in miles. Also, in the settings, you can set miles as default, but it's not working because I've set it as default and it still keeps trying to fire me along in kilometers. Because you want it in miles, because then you, because then you can see how many miles an hour you're going, just to make sure you're you know doing your speeds and not getting stung by the cameras, which are everywhere. Road Lords is brilliant for cameras. Honestly, it's absolutely bang on. Um, yeah, so if that's your issue, that I would recommend it for that one. Uh, Bob Keane says, does the quality of the phone make a difference? It does to a degree. Um, if you've got a raving, raving old phone, or a slow phone, or a low spec phone, it ain't going to work so well. I mean, this one I got on contract, the one I'm talking on to you right now, I, mate, it doesn't owe me any money. I'm just on this thing, you know, it's kind of, it's my YouTube, and it's my radio, and it's my sat nav, and it's my exchange, and it's everything, this phone. Um, it's one of them Samsung S10s. That's good. I have heard from the point of view of the exchange that. The app is easier than to design for iPhones. Because if you've got to design it for an iPhone, you've got to design it for one separate operating system. If you've got to design it for um, other phones, you know, like for just Android, you've got to do it for the Android and the Huawei and the one-to-one -one and whatever other mates there are, the Sony, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then also I've found out with Android sometimes, like... Um, some of the XPO apps and places like that, or maybe the, the Amazon Prime apps, they don't sometimes want to go on the Apple. Oh, you got an Apple? Oh, you can't have it. It only works on the Android. It, I, I mean, these phones ain't there no more. You know, you you can get probably a decent Android phone, second hand, probably about 80, 90 quid. I'll just go do that. Um, when this one runs out of contract, if it's still playing a game, I'm just going to stick along with this one. They, they bring them out now. Oh, it's got a camera that can see a man on the moon. Fabulous. You crack on with that, son. I'm just sitting, I'm, I'm sitting a foot away. Just doing a blinding job. Cheers. Um, right, what we got? Uh, Leighton Charles and Danny Van Owner both swear by that Tom Tom Pro. 300 quid. All singing, all dancing. Tells you which lane you want to be in. Right, I'm going to bear it in mind, guys. I, uh, and Terry, Sh oh, Terry Shoot says, he says he'd never heard of the DVA getting the umpy ways. He said you could always use an HDV Atlas. I don't know the last time I looked at an Atlas. On my course, there were 20 people. Two of us could read a map. I was one of them. Uh, that's because I'm old. Um, but honestly, I, 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 they, I, atlases were fine when there were no sat -naps, But now, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this Road Lords thing, see how it cracks on. If not, I'd probably always go for the cheapest way possible. If that don't work out, I want to get in a truck and it starts getting me into trouble. I'll probably try the co-pilot thing. Darren, who's that geezer I used to talk to, the geezer in the truck. Darren, if you're out there, mate, hope you're all right, mate. You know where I am, call me anytime. Um... I've got to keep catching up with people. I keep finding out, you know, just forgetting to ring people. Um, he said that was very, very good. And that's 85 quid, but it's part of your phone. And if the phone links up with the, with the truck and everyone's happy, I'll probably go that way. Or maybe I might try the TomTom Tom Pro. 
might give it a bash. But I'm going to get in the truck. First of all, I've got to get the appraise and get in the truck. And then I'll, I'll um, it's one of those cross that bridge when you come to it type of face. But I'll let you know how that one goes. Right, what else have we do? Done a few videos this week. Um, what if the job doesn't fit? Don't write down who done this. Sorry, mate. I've, I've, I've got your number. He, he, he said, I turned up uh, for five standard pallets. I have to make a little thing. There we go. Uh, turned up for five standard pallets. They've overstacked them. You know, like it's got to go. Now, I can get five standard pallets in my Luton, providing they are inside the pallet. Now, if you get a pallet and then you put a boat on top, it's no longer a pallet. You know, or if you've got the boxes and the pallet's that big, but we've put the boxes so they're just, they're like an inch or quarter of an inch, even like a centimetre, a couple of centimetres over the top and they shrink wrapped them, suddenly those two pallets do not fit next to each other in the loon. So this pallet, I'll just turn around to him and go, that's no good. I mean, he actually managed to get the job off. He said, and fair play to him. He said, can I break them down? He got four on and he took some boxes off. And you do that. You say, I'm all right to break it down. And you just sort of end up handballing it and messing it around a bit. As long as they'll let you take it to pieces. Sometimes they go, no, they've got to be delivered as planets. And you say, well, in that case, then they're not planets, though, are they? They're not going on. So, but um, Lee Westcott says he gets it all the time of house removals, mate. I do one on this one as well. Oh, mate, the amount of times we used to do that. I haven't got every single punter, and I was guilty of it when I moved house because I thought it was true. We'll turn around and go, I haven't got much. And then you go to, um, oh, okay, right, fine. Have you got a shed? Oh, yeah, got a shed. Yeah, yeah, it's full of tools. Anything in the loft? Oh, yeah, boxes in the loft. Yeah, loads of boxes in the loft. And the, um, you got, um, you know, you've got garage. Oh, yeah, the garage. Yeah, for the bikes, kids' toys. What about the patio? You got any pots? Oh, you've got 20 pots. Yeah, I can't stack a plant pot with a plant in on top of another plant because it will squash the original plant. Mate, all the time. Uh, and I was guilty, like I said. When I moved house a little while ago, that was not, I used to move house once a year. God knows why. Um, and I said to the guys, I've got no white goods. I said, I haven't got much. They turned up with a, 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 a like a 10 ton, 24 foot removal truck and a Luton van and filled both of it. And I kind of went, oh, I didn't realize how much. And they went, yeah, mate, you and the rest of the world. But yeah, that's, yeah, no, you're not wrong on that one, Lee. Uh, Steve Bradley says, he, he said, the amount of time I've had this too, the flip side of it, turn up in a short wheelbase to deliver a box, an envelope, a light bulb, oh, it just makes me laugh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've done jobs where you know, I've picked it deliberately because it was the only job coming out of that area and it's my diesel money home. You wouldn't normally do a small van job, but I'd, <laughs> you go and you go, is that it? <laughs> okay. There you go, that needs delivering to London. I'm in a living. Take it yourself in the car. Um, yeah. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? It makes me smile. Um, and Checker's solution is if you turn up and the job won't fit, either A, cut it in half with the customer's position or, or, or drive off. Yeah, OK. Maybe ring the shipper first. Uh, right, what else do we do? Best CPC, Andrew Allsop, um, who's the guy I was on the course with. Um, he said on his course, you know, they said that they dialed in from everywhere. He had a guy dialed in from a sleeper cab. He was in the van, in the lorry, and actually done the course from the cab. Um, and Andrew, I'd say thanks very much for all the um, the pings across the lorries and all that. Appreciate it, mate. Um, and Smart Bomb, who's um, the, who's my pilot mate from America, uh, he did the course. He said on his course there were people from Thailand and Australia. I presume they're just like you know national drivers who are currently in Thailand or Australia who are going to come home and start driving, but just want to do their course before they come home. Uh, and Steve Campbell says on the back of my license, he said there's no thing for P P PSV for minibuses. You're probably right, mate. But to be honest with you, I don't intend to drive a minibus, so I'm just quite happy as long as I can get in my truck when the truck comes. More than happy with that one. About ten videos covered. Um... Right, so we're on the miscellaneous. We know the fuel thing's getting on my nerves as well. Ian Merrick says fuel is going up 1 to 2p a litre, yet the economy shrunk by 20%. Yeah, I know. And the thing that's getting me is, I mean, I'm getting a price of like 98 pence. And I filled up yesterday in Asda when I put some in yesterday in Asda's. And it's 110. Now, if that's 110 plus fat, that's 90 pence. And if I'm getting 98p without the fat, it's costing me an extra 10p on a fuel card why am I using the fuel card? I don't need to use it. It's just convenience. 
So I'm going to have a little word with them this week. I'm going to do some videos this week on how to get fuel cards. But I'm going to I'm going to do videos on the whole lot. Sorry guys, if it's going to be it's going to, next week. This week is going to be how to buy a van, how to join the Courier Exchange, how to get insurance, how to get fuel cards, and how to get factoring companies. The five things that I think you need to do when you get started. Because I get asked this stuff all the time, and I kind of I just want to draw a line under it, get those five out there, and then there's like a beginning to end. And I say that if you want to crack on, that's what you do to crack on, and then we'll get back to the irreverent nonsense after that so um steve campbell says um oh yeah i did a video saying you're up early have you not been to bed that was that one about the trick in the towel I, i'll be honest with you mate what and uh, i did that video about three weeks ago i'm, I'm going you know, as usual totally honest i did that before i did my cpc course i didn't get time to get it out and then i did the cpc course and then i keep i kept thinking i'd run out of things to say but it's the other way around I could do your free videos a day on the amount of stuff that happens, but I'm sure you really don't want to wear that. So, um, and I thought I'd better bang that one out, but I, I scheduled it. And also it means that I can go and I can stick all them funny card things and end screen things and all that on it. And um, I scheduled it, but I keep forgetting, to, when I've been scheduling it for 4 o'clock, 4.30, I'm supposed to be ending it at um, 16.30. So it goes at 4 o'clock in the morning, I've done it wrong again. I've done it more than once. So I took it down and put it back up again, but it was funny that. <laughs> Or we could use the fork truck next door. Um, what else we got here? Christian, I think it's in Bahara. Sorry, mate, I've written, you know, I've written down quickly. Can you work with an older van on the CX? Now, yes, is the short answer. Now, I'm sure I must have done a video on this before, but I can't find it. So what I'll do, mate, is I'll do you one on that. Might take a week or so to get it out because I've got to do them ones for next week. But um, I will do one on that. If I have done it, guys, give me a shout because there's like 256 videos now. And I forget what I've done and I start trying to scroll through my archive. And I don't know what I've called it. Uh, try van, try older, try... And I'm like, I can't find it. So I'll do it again. If I, or if I have done it, someone give me a shout. Yeah, you have done it, Pete. It's called this. I'll do a little link and you can crack on with that one. Um... Harry's house says the ship. Yeah, this was true. He said he, he's, he's had a nice week. He said the shipper phoned him and gave him an extra twenty quid because his paperwork's up to date. They'll do that sometimes. On one of my first ever jobs, I was coming home, was literally five minutes away from home, and job pinged up, loot and Heathrow. And I thought I was I was young. I'm the young. I was right first on it, and I thought I'll do that. I was keen. I picked this job up. I got halfway around the twenty-five. The whole thing stopped. A lorry had fallen over. I was on it for four hours extra. Uh, but I still cracked on. Instead of getting the job dropped off, I picked up about four o'clock. I was due to be dropped off about six o'clock, something like that. I got dropped off about half past ten. But I got it off because I didn't want to be bottled up for the morning. Rung the guy, said I've done it. He said I've stuck an extra 25 quid on for you. I thought, well, thanks. You know, it's not your fault I quoted. I quoted the right money. It's not your fault the lorry fell over. But I think he just appreciated the fact that I got it through. They will do it sometimes. Some people are just nice. They'll be fair. They'll give you the decent price. A lot of people, a lot of shippers, decent people. Talk to them. They're human beings, you know. Um, Hussein Rizal says, how much... How, he says, you know, the money you make is still decent money. I don't disagree with you, my friend. But be, you know, it does decent money. But be, I mean, I did a video on this yesterday because a couple of people were saying, what, one guy said, uh, what's his name, James Phoenix, what's it like out there at the moment? I thought, well, I'm just going to be straight with you. This is what I've done this week. But you've got to bear in mind, it's good money, but it's not all yours. There's going to be diesel coming out of that. There's wear and tear on the motor coming out of that. There's tax coming out of that. Sometimes it seems a bit like, well, you, but you stick that bit to one side because you're going to need that. If you spend it all and the clutch goes, it makes you out, isn't it? So, but yeah, no, I don't disagree with you, mate. And it's certainly more money than I was making on the markets. It saved me. Keep saying that. You know, I don't know why I'd be without it. So, and we, we seem to be doing all right, you know. Hopefully I picked up a new, not so much customer, a contact. And if I have, it's round the corner, big firm, lovely fella. If this comes off, I'm going to be well pleased. But that's the thing, you know, as I keep saying, not a magic wand. You get out what you put in, and as time goes by, it gets easier. That's how I found it. Um, Mark Kenny says... Has anyone seen a job back from Scotland that isn't a backload? Just ignore them. Video on what a backload is, or theoretically what a backload is. Just ignore it. When they, I, that's, that just winds me up when they turn around and go, right, it needs to be picked up within the next hour and get there as soon as possible. And it says backload. That's not a backload. If you need it picked up straight away and taken there on a hurry up, it's not a backload. Call it, you can call it a, a Ford Mondeo. It's not, it's a hot shot. People don't doing. Brian Fletcher, are there any other sites down the CX? Um, 
and let shift I'm not done. Sorry, mate, I've written that. I've done scribbly second name down. Don't know what it is. How do you network with other courier companies? Right. There are other places out there. Use as many as you possibly can. There's one called Courier Expert. I haven't tried it. I, apparently, the people tell me that um, it's a little bit cheaper, but you don't get anything like the amount of jobs. There's also Shipley you can use. Some removal people use Shipley. You can ring, you know, for how do you get to network with other companies? You can ring them direct, ring any of the firms and go, look, I live in the area. Go in and see them. Would you take me on your books? In my personal opinion, and it is just my opinion, the Courier Exchange is the best one out there. You affiliate yourself with one firm, they'll tell you they've got loads of work, and then you find yourself sitting there for two hours. If you um, go on any other sites, there, there just isn't the amount of jobs there is on the CX. That's kind of why the CX is so popular, because it, that's just my opinion. And like I say, how do you network with other companies? It comes through time, do jobs for them, and then eventually you'll go, you're good, are you local? Are you available tomorrow? just keep banging away at it that's what i did and i'm still continu continuing to do um right we got on the truck thing jamie garraway he says get a man or a death starsky says avoid vi vicos like the plague he said we had we bought three brand new he said they spent more time in the garage than they do on the road i used to oh and thanks again to andrew also for the links thanks to anybody who's pushing trucks my way um yeah i, I fancy death i've got to be honest with you i like that I like the look of them. They look kind of round and aerodynamic. They look a bit like a Scania. Kind of like the look of them. I don't mind the Iveco's. I used to have an Iveco, but everyone tells me, even my mechanics just don't do it. So I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to buy a, a, a truck and then, you know, have it parked around the corner at the commercial place, getting this, that, and the other done all the time. I wouldn't mind a man, but they're kind of boxy. They look a bit square. I kind of, I just like, so, I, yeah, ideally a death. I'd, if, if the right man came up for the right money, I wouldn't say no. And I suppose if the right IV could come up for the right money, I wouldn't say no. But it would have to be really good and really cheap. I can't see it, to be honest with you. So, um, there we go. And on the other subject of that, Danny Boy says he's also used to me and me. He's also still waiting for his own license to come through. Mate, I'll race you. Mine apparently is due. They reckon they're trying to process it by the middle of July. I'll let you know when it goes in. Uh, so, that's kind of all the miscellaneous for today. Um... Yeah, James Phoenix asked me how is the CX at the moment. I did that video yesterday, mate. I hope that clear. That's just what happened to me this week. Next week's another week. Every day is different. Um, he also says, um, which factoring companies you use? Mate, there's a video going out Thursday. Tell you who to get in contact, how to do it, and what you need. They won't take everybody. And, you know, they want to take you if... Just bear this in mind. They want to take you if you're making loads of money. So you might want to tell them you're making loads of money. Because, you know, hopefully you will. Um, oh, this did make me smile. Um, Ian Merrick says, he said, we could do a TV programme, not the Crystal Maze, the Courier Maze. And he's actually he's, he's actually gone down. If you, if you go to the Crystal Maze video, check out Ian Merrick's comment at the bottom of it. It's like, game number one, the fork truck driver game. The fork truck driver has to get it from there. And it was game number two. It was called, he's actually come up with some really good titles as well, like Ridgeback something or other. I just called it the dog in the garden game. You've got to deliver a parcel to that back door. But between the gate and the back door is a Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> it did make me smile. I said to you, I might do a video on that one day. The uh, it's just an irreverent one. It's a game I like to play, which is try to make the miserable fork truck driver smile when you get there. And they're like, mm. <laughs> and by the end of the site, I do my very best to try and get a grin out of them. Not always easy, bless them. They haven't always had the best day. And finally, Arthur Valentine he says, I challenge you to do the super song. Can't do it, mate. Sorry, there's two criteria to doing the soup song. Firstly, someone has to mention the word soup. And secondly, Molly has to be here. We only do it together. So it's from the Mighty Boosh. If you ever watch the Mighty Boosh, it's that Noel Fielding and um, Julian Barrett, Noel Fielding. You know, Noel Ju 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 Fielding, very flamboyant, makes cakes. Um, yeah, there used to be in a programme called the Mighty Boosh. Loved it. First series, it's, it's very surreal. First series, the best one set in a zoo, but yeah, do like that. So that's it, guys. Tony q and for another Sunday. Uh, we're going down to phase three now, so that's kind of cool. Um, cinemas are opening, just about four pubs are opening. Hopefully the toll will stay low. You know, they reckon the infection's done its bit now, so let's go back to it. Let's go back and take care and take money. Have a good Sunday. <laughs>